Phenomenalism is the belief that human knowledge is confined to or founded on the realities or appearances presented to the senses in any given moment. This teaching is based on an interest in what happens to things when we aren't focused on them or when we don't perceive them at all. It is the view that physical objects cannot justifiably be said to exist in themselves, but only as sensory stimuli situated in time and in space. Scientists have carefully studied the system of ideas and conclude that when we don't see something in our reality, it is either non-existent or has disappeared. In other words, objects only exist as a phenomenon of consciousness. For many, there is the belief that there is no existence without perception. For example, the book you've been reading exists while you're aware of it, but when you turn away from it, it ceases to exist until you or someone else interacts with it. This is the basis of phenomenalism. Within this theory, it can be concluded that if we aren't consciously aware of or interacting with something, it is not in our field of current perception. But we do have the option to alter our field of perception at will. Nothing is defined as not anything or not at all or can be broken down into its most basic meaning of no thing. But it is impossible to have the experience of nothing. There is no such thing as nothing, and since nothing is non-existent, you may now realize that your attention is always on what does exist in your current field of perception. More so, the belief that something you want does not exist is merely a belief in something that hasn't been created by you just yet. You believe in it, you just don't believe that it is a part of your experience. All potential outcomes and possibilities exist. So if you believe that what you want is something you aren't currently experiencing, you simply need to observe its form first to bring it into manifestation. This is cause and effect, and it follows the law of reversibility, which states that all transformations of force are reversible. For example, if friction can produce electricity, then the law of reversibility dictates that electricity can produce friction, and this is a fact. Furthermore, if a physical fact or experience can produce a psychological state, then when reversed, a psychological state can produce a physical fact. For example, if you were to pick up an apple and eat it, you would be able to experience the taste of that apple in full detail. The law of reversibility states that if you could vividly imagine that detailed taste over and over, the apple would eventually have to show up as experience for you. Manifesting is always, in every single moment, happening by you. You are literally in a constant state of manifesting, so you simply cannot stop manifesting. Whatever is currently in your field of perception is your current manifestation. You may have multiple things happening at once, but it all matches your current vibrational field and focus, and you have drawn it in to your physical senses for observation. The question to ask yourself at any given moment is, do you like what you are manifesting or what you are currently experiencing? If the answer is no, then you have an opportunity to change it anytime you wish. Your subconscious mind informs you that what you see is solid, and those things generally relate to previous experience because that's what it knows best. This is why our field of perception will rarely deviate very far. These tangible objects you perceive with your senses take up space and constitute what we refer to as matter. And matter, in its most basic form, is a vibrational mass of energy. Think of how things that appear solid can change state or form very quickly. For example, water can be transformed into many visible states. Frozen, fluid, stagnant, and steam. Depending on what transformation of force or energy is being applied to water will determine the physical structure of it. Deliberate focused thought invites other thoughts of similar vibration to give support to the original thought. Once this happens, you can begin to manifest deliberately. You are constantly guided in the direction of your dominant thoughts because of their power to attract more thoughts and energy of the same type. 
what this means is when you consciously decide to dominate the types of thoughts, feelings, and visualizations you have and remain consistent in doing so, the law of reversibility will bring your manifestation to you. Try this simple exercise to begin shifting your daily field of perception and create a more fertile ground for your creations to show up in your life. Draw a line down the center of a piece of paper. Label the first column, Manifestations that make me happy. Label the second column, Things I see, do, or experience every day. In the first column, write down what you truly want to manifest. Next to each item, write down how it will change your life and how it makes you feel when you think about having it. Be as detailed about your feelings towards these items as possible. In the second column, write down the things that you typically experience in your life now. There's no need to go into great detail about your feeling states regarding these things because the ones that don't match what you want to manifest will stick out to you. Compare your lists and ask yourself which ones you like the most. Are there things on your second list that make you happy? Are there things that you currently experience that you would like to change? If so, cross those things off your things that you experience list. Now you have a list of all the things that you can refer to for focus when you feel yourself too engaged in your current experiences that don't relate to what you truly want for yourself. Keep this list with you and learn to shift what your dominant focus is on whenever you find yourself too absorbed in what you don't like about your life. The more you do this, the more you train your mind to center itself on the desires that you want to manifest. And through the law of reversibility, what you produce in your physical and psychological state and maintain as the dominant position will produce the result you wish for. So often people fail to achieve any measurable results from their attempts because their focus is not centered on the manifestation. It can become easy to be distracted by what is rather than understanding that you have the potential to change that with dedication. It doesn't matter if you dream big or dream small, you are in charge of manifesting what you experience. You have a canvas in front of you to work with every single moment of every single day. You can keep the canvas mild and add just a little color here and there, or you can make it bright and vivid and so unique that it only fits you and everything you want. Ask yourself, what will you create today?